The subterranean world is a rich and diverse space, teeming with animals to be discovered and lost cities to be rediscovered. But to explore these spaces, we need tools to non-invasively study them. While technologies exist that can detect large objects underground, it can often be unreliable and slow. And it is often focused on industries that make significant profit from extracting precious metals and other objects from the ground. But think of all the archaeological sites we could find if we could quickly and reliably identify what lies below the surface. There's even significant interest in construction where large projects can uncover unanticipated objects, from ruins to even unexploded bombs. In this latest piece of research, scientists have used quantum mechanics to measure local changes in the Earth's gravitational field. These results promise to be a game changer in this space. So how does it work? And why do I say that this could be a game changer? Let's discuss it. The type of measurement that these researchers have used is called quantum sensing. You can think of this as almost the opposite of quantum computing. In quantum computing, you want to isolate your qubit so there's no interference on it which can make invalid calculations. In quantum sensing, this paradigm is flipped. You want to take your quantum sensor, which in many cases is just a qubit, and allow it to interact with the environment. By measuring this interaction, we get information about the environment, and thus we can sense something. I personally have a lot of experience in quantum sensing, having done my PhD and still doing research in this topic today, but I use a quantum sensor to detect magnetic fields. Here the scientists have used a different quantum sensor to detect gravity, and that is pretty special. While this might not be the first time that quantum sensors have been used to detect gravity, there is something special about this latest design that it has it outperforming previous techniques. This comes down to the way that the experiment is being constructed. But before we get into that, how does the measurement work itself? The technique relies on using something called cold atoms, having a laser that can control them, using quantum superpositions, and using quantum interference. In order to perform this experiment, scientists have to place everything within a vacuum tube. Once within the vacuum tube, they can release ions from an ion source and use a laser to trap these ions. This laser that illuminates the atoms from above and below interacts with them in such a way that it confines them spatially. Basically, if the atoms are moving towards the laser source, a small amount of energy is imparted from the laser onto the atoms, forcing them to turn around, moving in the opposite direction. By having two of these, you can confine the atoms into a single location. When this is performed correctly, the atoms will stay in place. You can think of this very similarly as holding a ball in place using either a constant flow of air or water. In this experiment, the laser is also reflected off side mirrors, which helps to confine it in the X and Y direction as well. Normally, this would be achieved with multiple different lasers. By adding these mirrors in, the experiment became much more simple by only having sources from above and below. All of this combined creates something called a magneto-optical trap, and it is this trap that holds the atoms in their place so they can perform quantum experiments on them. Not only does the trap hold them in place, but it also cools the atoms down, giving them the quantum coherence required to perform measurements on them. Once the atoms are trapped and cold, the experiment can begin. The basic idea is to perform the quantum measurement while the atoms are in freefall. When this is done right, quantum measurement generates an interference pattern that is perturbed by the local gravitational field. The principle of this experiment is very similar to a Mark Zender interferometer. This apparatus was first proposed by Ludwig Zender in 1891 and has a relatively simple design. A coherent light source is split into two with a beam splitter. One path goes through an empty vessel, while the other path goes through a vessel that has something in it for example, a flame. When the light passes through the flame, it accumulates a phase from interacting with the particles of the flame itself. When these two light sources are recombined, there is a phase difference from the interaction of the flame. And this phase difference generates an interference pattern. And it is this interference pattern that captures an image of the flame itself. This latest work is basically the same. There is an interference pattern that is not generated by passing through a flame, 
but through passing through the local gravitational field. And rather than using a beam splitter to make two parts, the scientists can use quantum mechanics to make a quantum superposition to generate two parts, and this superposition can then interfere based off the gravitational field. And they can control the atoms themselves to make a quantum superposition through applying short laser pulses to the atoms. But if all of this has been achieved before, what is so novel about this latest experiment? Well, they built two of these quantum sensors within the same device. Having two of these detectors allows them to correlate the measurements. And it's this correlation of the measurements that drastically reduces the amount of noise that they experience. Every experiment has noise, and it's not limited by the sensor itself, but the environment that it's in. Various things can influence the quantum sensor, like changes in the electrical current applied to the system or trains going past nearby. It's very important to reduce this noise. One way to do that is to measure for an exceedingly long period of time, and over time you average out that noise. They circumvent this by being able to measure two systems at the same time and correlate them. They predict that this increases their sensitivity by 10 to 100 times, and therefore they can measure the same object with one tenth or one one hundredth of the same time period, drastically increasing the usability of the device. And all of this is combined into a very neat travel box that can be pushed around on wheels. To prove that this device worked, they constructed a tunnel within a room and used the device to detect where this tunnel was. Scanning their device around the room, they were quickly able to identify where the tunnel existed inside the room. Furthermore, they were able to get a great estimate on the depth and the size of the tunnel itself. They go on to simulate the response of this device to various sources underground, showing that it could clearly identify train tunnels, underground water supplies, and even old ancient ruins. Unlike other techniques, this technique does not require reflection of the object. We don't need to send in a source wave and measure that reflection back, and therefore require that the object itself is reflective to whatever wave source we send in. The only requirement is that there's a difference in the density of the object that we're trying to detect. And this is true for many objects. Therefore, this is a very universal technique to identify things that are underneath the ground. If this technique does prove to be cheap and reliable, this may completely change the way local gravitational measurements are done to date. The scientists themselves expect a commercial product to be available within five to 10 years. So we may even start seeing this on the market very soon. If you are interested in other gravitational measurements, check out this video here, where I explain how scientists measure the smallest amount of gravitational force ever. This is truly a quite an amazing experiment and incredibly difficult to do. Thanks for watching, have fun, and see you next time.